So if you haven't heard, BBC released a documentary called The True Cost of Milk. And as you can imagine, all of the dairy farmers are pretty upset about it. Even when there's the slightest criticism of the dairy industry, they all get up in arms and join hands together and scream biased hit piece against the dairy industry. Even if it's completely what I think was balanced and pretty unbiased, actually. There was no vegan messaging in there. It was just a pretty well-made, um, unbiased... Uh, documentary. What did I think of the documentary? I think they uncovered, the the investigations were good, uncovered uh, some sickening abuse, kicking cows, hitting calves and cows with shovels, leaving sick cows to suffer uh, without being euthanized, uh, dragging cows, downed cows by their hips and dragging their face across the ground and, you know, just went into a little bit about Red Tractor and had good old Abby, who was in Veganville, like the mouthpiece for the dairy industry. So all in all, the investigative work was very powerful and, you know, obviously quite distressing. But the message was a bit weird. It was like the true cost of milk. And then at the end, the question was, are you willing to pay more? But anyway, let's go through the dairy industries kicking and screaming in these articles. First of all, we got the Scottish farmer. That's not going to be a biased. <laughs> that's definitely not going to be a biased article by any, any stretch of the imagination, is it? Dairy industry slams sensationalist panorama program. UK dairy farmers have rejected the sensationalist picture painted of their industry by the BBC panorama program, A Cow's Life. The Royal Association of British Dairy Farmers said it was saddened by the Welsh case, but insisted that this inexcusable abuse was not representative of the dairy industry as a whole. Now, how would we go about proving that, mate? Are you, have you got a camera in every single dairy farm in the UK? How the hell do you know that it's not representative? Every time we investigate dairy farms, there's always abuse. Of course you're going to make that statement. You're the dairy, you're, you're the Royal Association of British Dairy Farmers. RABDF Managing Director Matt Knight said, UK dairy farmers operate to some of the highest welfare standards in the world. Did you read that out of the, the old Animal Agriculture UK playbook? That is just, hey guys, let's all have this big meeting. Whenever something comes up, just say this, UK has the highest standards in the world. They say it every time. It's like this weird propaganda messaging that they keep repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating into your brain so you're like oh wow uk's got the highest welfare standards in the world you know if they're the highest in the world they're not high enough <laughs> they're crap due to the robust comprehensive legal frameworks protecting animal welfare alongside the credible quality assurance schemes and initiatives that exist what you mean like red tractor wow good on you uh cow welfare is at the heart of everything they do oh really happy cows are productive cows which is why why it is so important not necessarily Productive cows produce 10 to 12 times more milk than natural. Profitable cows don't have their calves with them, so they get removed. And it's also profitable to slaughter them and sell sell their bodies and to slaughter little be uh, calves for beef. That's profitable. So what's profitable isn't always what's happy. Oh, wow. Yeah, like here, we, here it is. Our farmers go work long hours, often going weeks without a break to ensure the health and welfare of their cows are maintained. So we, we are sad to see that BBC has chosen to highlight one farm where inexcusable abuse has, was witnessed, as this is not representative of our industry. Oh, you know, playing the poor me farmer's card ain't gonna work, all right? Farmers need to stop abusing animals. They need to stop using animals to make profit. They can start farming plants or do something else and don't do the poor farmer me trip. We know what goes on in these farms. Farmers get frustrated with cows. They hit them. They essentially are using them to make profit. So they're not going to treat them like these, oh, we, we treat our animals like our children and we forcibly impregnate them, steal their calves away, kill them all in the end. So there's just one farm that does this, hey? Just one farm and there hasn't been other investigations. You've got to remember, dairy farming is a business, all right? And anything that hurts their business, they're going to come out against. The only reason they care about how they're represented is because it's going to affect their sales, their profit margins. Don't be hoodwinked by all of this rhetoric like, our poor farmers working hard to feed the population. It's all nonsense. Uh, Mr. Knight added, while the inclusion of the ethical dairy whereby calves are kept with their mother showed high welfare, the system is not commercially viable for most dairy farmers, with the program highlighting that most of the liquid milk was consumed by the calves. You know, see, they don't they don't care about what's better for the animals if it affects their profit margins. The program did, however, highlight the fact that many farmers are losing money or making very little money, which is important as the value of milk is under, underestimated by the vast majority of consumers, both in monetary and nutritional terms, as time milk and dairy products are valued correctly. So, see, this is what the program got right. We should get more money for our milk because we, we're in this for the money you know the, the program definitely got that right they need to pay more they should pay, pay us more money give us more money it's a business here we go this is a good one 
dairy farmers' fury at sensationalist BBC panorama show. It was not sensationalist. It was not. It was like proper BBC unbiased work. Like, if you think that's sensationalist, just because they showed investigation footage, then I don't know what to tell you. Just because it didn't praise dairy in every way and completely avoid all of the ethical problems with dairy, you think it's sensationalist. It's, it's absolute nonsense. Furious Norfolk dairy farmers said a sensationalist depiction of animal abuse in the BBC Panorama pro program gave an unfair reflection of their industry. <laughs> Oh God, the documentary entitled A Cow's Life detailed shocking abuse at Welsh Dairy whose Red Tractor Farm Assurance certification has since been suspended. Yeah, it has been suspended. Red Tractor will only suspend farms when they look so bad, right? If they don't, they'll act on it, right? And they had to act on this BBC uh, documentary. They had to act on that farm. But otherwise, you won't see Red Tractor exposing these farms. Every time Red Tractor and that go in there and RSPCA go in there, everything's fine. Everything's fine, they don't see anything. It's always animal people exposing these places. It's never the industry itself. Norfolk dairy farmers said the focus on one abusive farm painted an unfair picture of animal welfare standards across the whole industry. It doesn't matter what the standards are, mate. It matters what happens to these animals in reality. There could be all these standards on paper that aren't being adhered to. Because guess what? No one's got eyes on your farm at all times, do they? Do they? Do you have cameras operating at all times? It's a fact that whenever you put hidden cameras or investigators in these places, something horrible is going on one way or the other. So we have to go with the evidence that we have. We don't just go by the opinions of the people who are making profit from this industry, because that would be pretty stupid, wouldn't it? Hey, I'm making a bunch of money from dairy. Everything's fine here, guys. Everything's fine here. And then the people who don't have anything to gain, right? Animal people who are just actually have the animal's interest at heart are showing you that there's something going on here. We don't have higher profit margins as activists if more people stop eating dairy, do we? We don't have a monetary incentive for people to stop eating dairy. The farmers have a monetary incentive for you to continue eating dairy, which is why they're doing all this damage control. So let's go into this one for a second here. Red Tractor Terminates Farm After BBC Uncovered Animal Abuse. Just notice this title here. Red Tractor Terminates the Farm After the BBC Uncovered the Animal Abuse. Not because Red Tractor Uncovered the Animal Abuse. No. Red Tractor has terminated the dairy farm from its assurance scheme after BBC Panorama showed systemic di uh, disregard for animal welfare on the farm. Yeah, well, they had to because if they didn't, they'd look pretty bad, wouldn't they? The program shows serious breaches of red tractor standards and the law, it said, as well as a systematic disregard for animal welfare by those with a duty of care. Well, the entire industry is a systematic disregard for animal welfare. They all get slaughtered for their bodies, the calves, the mothers. They get turned into leather jackets. They get turned into burgers. You know, that's a systematic disregard for animal welfare, no matter which way you look at it. They're, they're treated as products. They're treated as profit margins. The farmers only care about the animal's welfare as far as it serves their financial interest. That's it. <sighs> Red Tractor assures over 11,000 dairy farms which are required to meet robust standards on animal welfare. Well, there's only, I think there's only 12,000 in the UK. So Red Tractor assures most of them, okay? And every time you leave a camera in a dairy farm, there's something horrible going on there. Just check out my documentary, uh, White Gold. That was about three or four nights in dairies, three or four nights and we just seen, you know, calves separated, uh, animals pining for their mothers, you know, skinny, diarrhea-ridden cows on concrete floors, just limping and horrible stuff. A Red Tractor spokesman said the unacceptable actions of staff on one farm in no way represents the vast majority of UK dairy farmers or British agricultural practices. Well, of course you're going to say that, Red Tractor. You were founded by the NFU, National Farmers Union. You're basically founded by farmers for farmers. You have no independent scrutiny. You're just you know, a farming lobby group essentially founded you. <laughs> so of course you're gonna defend farming. You're, you're not a animal welfare charity. When you think about it, it's just a, a, a heavily biased organization. Red Tractor's system of routine farm inspections and unannounced spot checks go a long way to ensuring compliance with our standards. Oh really? Then how come your spot inspections never make media headlines? How come that never happens? I've never seen Red Tractor um, exposes dairy farm for not adhering to their standards. What you do is you let the farmers know you're coming. If anything's seen, it's definitely, we don't see it reported in the media, do we? You probably just give them a little warning. I don't know. This is just my opinion, of course. So where there's a clear violation of our membership rules and our standards are not at help, a farm will be terminated from our scheme. Well, only usually when you, you, you're outed in a BBC documentary and you have nowhere to turn. The grocer, well, this looks like a, a very pro-farming um, little article here. New allegations of animal abuse won't help a dairy sector already on the brink. Oh my God. I 
I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to cry. A, a dairy sector that's already on the brink. It's faced buffeting from declining consumption at various points, coupled with growing competition from plant-based dairy alternatives, which, as we've seen in recent ads from the likes of Oatly and Alpro, are becoming increasingly vocal in their opposition to the sector. Process of Freshways was equally shocked. With Freshways, I think, supply Costa. They were being supplied by this farm, I'm pretty sure. Process of Freshways was equally shocked by the expose and said it was working around the clock with Red Tractor to ensure these allegations were fully investigated. Uh, yeah, if there was a full-scale investigation of your farms, I'm sure that you would find a lot more of that. It's just common, so common. There is also an under understandable backlash from disgusted consumers on social media. Industry Body Dairy UK added to those voices of condemnation this week. Well, Dairy UK, like, you should change yourself into non-Dairy UK then if you really care. And of course, the consumers are going to be disgusted because you spend so much money propagating lies to them, propagating this humane fairy tale to them, that when anything descends from that, they're absolutely shocked and disgusted and don't want to buy milk anymore. It wouldn't surprise me if they never trust the dairy industry again. You can do as much damage control as you want, right? But people are not stupid and the dairy industry and the animal agriculture treat people like they're absolutely stupid and they're never going to look into this stuff themselves. So let's hope that people just wake up and understand that this is a big business. It's a huge business. They make a lot of money from it, cheese and yogurt and all of this stuff. People that are heavily invested in this industry. Okay, So anything that comes out, that's bad PR for them. Of course, they're going to do damage control, but just recognize that they're just trying to sell you a product. They're trying to make it look as humane and wholesome as possible so that you go out and buy the product and you're like, oh wow, the dairy farmers, the poor dairy farmers, I might support the poor dairy farmers, not realizing that you're actually just supporting massive conglomerates that are trying to make a massive gain off of the backs of animals. And they don't actually care about the animals like they say, because if you cared about animals, you wouldn't exploit them and kill them. Pretty simple, really. As Dairy UK says, any farm behaving in the way depicted on the Panorama episode does a massive disservice to the large majority of dairy farmers who care for their cows and are committed to world leading animal welfare standards. Wow, you act like dairy farmers are like sanctuaries and that's all they're committed to is welfare standards. They're committed to making profit first. Number one, any business is committed to making a profit, right? They're not committed to animal welfare to start with. You act like that's their primary concern, animal welfare. No, it's not. Like, for example, they're producing so much milk that their bodies can't handle it. You take their calves away from them, mutilate them, dehorn them, slaughter them against their will when they're six, seven, eight years old, right? If, that, if animal welfare was your primary concern, you wouldn't be exploiting and killing them, torturing them, right? And mutilations are standard, so torture is standard. Bludgeoning little baby calves to death with a hammer, you know? Horrible stuff like this. So no. They're not, they're not animal sanctuaries, dairy farmers. They're not just per concerned with this. They're, they're concerned with making money. And if you want to know a little bit more about that, look at my documentary, White Gold, that I released the other night. And you can find out a little bit more about how they make money from perverse things they do to animals in the dairy industry and beef industries. So let's keep going. Here we go. This is what we like to see. The Grocery Gazette. Shoppers ditch dairy following distressing BBC Panorama documentary. So good the BBC put this on there. The final messaging was... Are you willing to pay more? And uh, I'm glad that consumers are just like, pay more? I don't want to pay for this at all. All right, so I'm, I'm glad this is happening. Angry UK customers have taken to social media to boycott the dairy industry. Ah, uh, hit animal equality. Go animal equality, you legends. Go animal equality. Thank you very much for this expose. The NFU uh, deputy president, Abby Reader, even just one extra penny per litre will enable a farmer to upgrade or take advantage of new technology out there so cows are getting the best care they can. The National Farmers Union is a farming lobbying group, okay? Don't listen to them when it comes to animal rights or animal welfare. They're, they're there to make money for farmers. Uh, they're there to lobby for farmers. They're, they're there to do this type of damage control and keep propagating the humane lies um, of animal agriculture. Just remember, think of it as a massive corporation just trying to make a bunch of cash. One social media user said, ditch dairy even if you can't find good substitutes. Great one. Uh, you can find good substitutes, so there's amazing substitutes out there. You just got to give them a go. Another added, I had to turn a cow's life off. It was too distressing. What is wrong with people that they can be so cruel to defenseless animals? How can humans be so cold and brutal? Hashtag panorama. Well, you know what? Um, stop paying them. That's it. Don't put your money in there. Can't trust them. They're, they're going to lie to you. They're going to propagate humane propaganda to you so that you buy their product. You're a consumer at the end of the day, and you're paying them to do that to the animals. And there's no guarantee when you buy that bo bottle of milk no matter what the NFU or Red Track to tell you, Dairy UK tell you, there is no guarantee that there is an horrible abuse, even outside of the standard abuse, 
that the guidelines allow for, that there isn't horrible abuse on top of that every time you pay for dairy. You cannot guarantee that. There's no way of investigating every farm at one time. Never trust labels. This is the message. Never trust labels. Never trust red tractor labels. They're exposed constantly. They're always being exposed. Don't trust what the dairy spokespeople are telling you. They have a vested interest in this industry. Of course they're going to tell you what you want to hear. You are their customer. Think about it. Stop being their customer. Buy blended oats. <laughs> it's called oat milk. <laughs> Buy that. Soya milk. Buy uh, any other milk that doesn't involve directly exploiting uh, mothers and stealing calves and killing animals who have no choice in this. So there you go, that's my little review of the farmers' disgust at their industry being exposed once again. And this isn't the first expose, take your pick. I've exposed the dairy industry just recently. Surge, Viva, PETA, Animal Equality, Dominion, European investigators, investigators all around the world are constantly exposing the dairy industry. America, there was a massive expose at a Cadbury dairy farm by a group called Arm. There are so many to choose from. And what's that? They're just isolated incidences? Come on, the public are not gonna believe that nonsense for much longer. The veil has been lifted. People are gonna start waking up and go, wait a second, they're lying to me so they can sell their product. And they don't care about animals. They're not big animal sanctuaries. They're there for one reason. And the sooner you realize that is the sooner you put your money somewhere else. Thanks for watching, guys. Leave your comments down below. What did you think of the BBC Panorama documentary? You can find it, actually. Someone's uploaded it to YouTube. So if you don't have BBC One, you can find it on YouTube for now. Everyone, ditch dairy. Check out my documentary, uh, White Gold, as well. Yeah, let's change the world for animals by living vegan. Peace.